Hi there, this is Erica again with the Needle and Thread, and I'm here for video number two in the Block of the Month series. It's a skill builder Block of the Month quilt. It's called Lucky Stars. If you haven't seen the first video, then check out the link below. Um, links to all of the videos will be there. This is block number two, and I want you guys to know that it is a skill builder quilt. So for as busy and wild as this quilt looks on paper, it really is a lovely quilt. It helps you to build up all of those skills that you need to be able to apply to other blocks and other quilts that you make further along the line. Um, so you get some really great practice. If you haven't already, I'm gonna encourage you guys to subscribe below. There's a little button down there and uh, you'll be notified of all of the skill building videos that I put out, any video that I put out actually. I'm here to help you to learn and get better at quilting. This is what block number two looks like. It's an 18 and a half inch block, which frankly is pretty large. And you can see I have a sample of one on the wall behind me. It has the brown flying geese going around. It's a large block. We have several elements to put together, but if you if you work through it a little at a time, you're gonna understand how to chain sew. You're gonna understand how to make flying geese. A lot of people feel that flying geese are very tricky and hard to do, and frankly, they'll just kind of give up on it or find another way of making it. Flying geese do not have to be that difficult. So I'm gonna show you one of the ways that this pattern teaches you how to do it. And we're just gonna play with color. This is another thing that this pattern is really good for. It's helping you to play with color. So what I have here, the pattern itself gives you all the instructions on what colors to cut, um, how much to cut for it, and just like the previous block that we did, um, it gives you instructions on how to make two different blocks with the cutting instructions. So the one that we're gonna do today is this large 18 and a half inch block, but on the back, it also gives you a secondary block, which is a small one, and it's just the flying geese. Within the pattern of the quilt, you'll have spaces to put these smaller flying geese blocks. I'm not going to make those in the video today simply because that process is being used as we make the larger block. So the first thing that I did was I made sure that I made all of my cuts. Everything that is needed is right here on, the, on my board. I have the center square and then the three other colors and then I have some three and a half inch squares here that you can see I drew a diagonal across. These squares are actually going to be used for the corners for the flying geese. So we have three and a half by six and a half inch rectangles here, here, and here. Three and a half inch squares here. And then this blue, which is the center of our block, is six and a half inches square. So let's go ahead and get going. I'm gonna start off by teaching you how to do the flying geese blocks. So we're gonna start off by making this flying geese block, uh, which is the blue and white element within the larger 18 and a half inch block. Now, the colors that I've chosen are this pink and the white. The pink is going to take the place of the blue section, the geese, in the block. And then of course the background color is white, same as the picture that you see here. Now we talked in the previous video about chain sewing. Chain sewing is one of those techniques that helps you to get a bunch of things done, the same step done over and over in a shorter period of time. It saves thread, it saves energy, frankly. And so that's what we're gonna do here. You're gonna watch me assemble the, the flying geese block so that I can chain sew. In order to do so, I have marked the diagonal going through one diagonal on the square, corner to corner. Now there are times when you make two at a time half square triangle blocks and you draw your diagonal, but it's not at the exact corners, okay? So this one is absolute corner to corner because you are going to be sewing on this line. I use a friction pen, which is a heat erasable pen. Whatever marking tool that you wanna use that is not gonna be permanent in your fabric is going to be just fine. But the friction pen works for me. So what you do is you take your corner fabric, your background fabric with the diagonal and have the diagonal meet in the center of your goose block, just like that. And then I put two pins in it. So let me do it again. And I'm just gonna do a whole bunch of these. Uh, one block calls for eight flying geese. Keep in mind 
notice I'm making sure that I'm turning all of my background blocks in the same direction and just put two pins in to secure. When you're placing your background fabric on your goose fabric, it's important to make sure that all of your corners match up. The problem that people have with flying geese is that they never seem to come out to be the finished size where well, we're gonna make them so that they come out the finished size. Last one. In order for them to come out the finished size, you need to make sure that your background fabric squares are the same size as your goose fabric. So three and a half inches here, three and a half inches there. Okay, so now I'm going to have, I have my stack of goose fabric and background. All of my diagonals are facing in the same direction. So now I'm going to sew them. And when I sew, this is an important tip. When I sew, I'm not going to sew directly on the line. I'm going to sew just a hair on the outer edge, like the outside of the line. You're gonna see why. Make sure that you're not sewing toward the center of the goose block. You're sewing more to the outer edge of the goose block, just by a little bit. Okay, so I sewed one of my background pieces to my goose fabric and you can see the stitching right below the red line that I drew. It's very important to sew just a hair to the outside below, however you want to put it, of your diagonal line that you drew because this is going to allow for your block to be just a hair larger than the finished size that you want. The reason you want that is so that you'll be able to trim down, you'll have just a little bit of wiggle room to trim down your finished flying geese blocks. So when you make it, you're going to stitch just a little bitty bit to the outside of that diagonal line that you drew. So what I'm gonna do now is continue sewing and I'm going to chain sew the rest of my geese the same way, just a little bit, just a scant outside of that diagonal line that I drew so that it'll be a little bit larger than needed. So what we have here is our, the result of the chain sewing that I just did. All of the uh, background fabrics for each one of my goose blocks, I have the background fabric that's attached. And the way it's gonna end up being, once I cut, trim, and press it, is like this. So I'll have one half of it done. Remember, I had uh, stitched just to the left, just to the outside of my diagonal line. And so I'm gonna trim just to the outside of that. You can either do this with your scissors or with um, some rotary cutters, but what I've done is roughly trim to create a quarter inch seam allowance. Guys, make sure you don't trim on this edge <laughs> to keep the seam on the piece that makes the triangle. You want this triangle to fall off, okay? Because in just a minute, we'll take it to the ironing board and we'll press it open like this. So let me go through, separate all of my geese, and then I'm going to trim a quarter inch here and then we'll iron. If I hold them all in the same way, with the diagonal facing away from me, right? For the point to be in the center, going that way, then I can just simply just trim off just like this. If you repeat your motions in the same way every time, then you can ensure that you're not going to make mistakes, that everything comes out the way that it needs to. Do it do it right the first time and then just replicate that action okay so now you see that I have a nice stack of eight half geese they're all facing in the same direction and all of these little triangles for as sweet as they are they're going to be tossed now I need to move over to the iron and press them so that um, I can do my next step now when I press a couple of things are gonna happen my mark my red mark because I used a friction pen my red mark is gonna go away 
I'm gonna start by pressing my seam flat to set it, and then I'm going to gently use the iron, move my seam allowance out toward my background fabric. So it's gonna look like this. Okay, so we're at the iron here, and I'm going to just set the seam here, and you can see already that the red line is here, but when I hit it with the iron, because it's a hot iron, my red line goes away. Set the seam, I'm gonna open it up gently, and then I'm not going to, to use a lot of pressure. I'm gonna let the heat of the iron do that pressing for me. There we go. So my stitching came all the way to the corner here. I have it nice and crisp coming down to the center of my, my goose block. Let's do it again. And I'm just gonna go through all of these. Set the seam, make the mark disappear, and then just gently push it over. Now I do want to make sure that my seam allowance points completely over to my background fabric. That's super important. And because I marked carefully and I pinned carefully, you can see that the edge of my pink is in line with the edge of my white. They match up. Fabulous. And remember guys, I'm here to give you tools to put into your toolbox of knowledge for future quilts that you're making. There are a million different ways to go about making these blocks. I'm giving you just one way and tips that I know. You're gonna come across people who give you other tips. Use what makes sense and works for you. Okay, so I have all eight of my half geese done. So now I'm going to add on the other background fabric to make the complete goose. The thing that I do want you to notice here though, is that when I place the other square on top, there's a bit of overlap right here. We want that. The overlap of the two background fabrics is important. It should overlap about a quarter of an inch right here. A little bit more is better, but um, that is what we're looking for. A lot of people get very nervous because when they put the second square onto the geese or the goose, they find that overlap and they are aware that your points aren't supposed to overlap and float. So this is something that we absolutely want. So let me pin and then we'll start sewing those again. So what we're looking at right here is I stitched again instead of stitching directly on that red line, I stitched just below it, just to the right of it. This section of the block is going to be cut off. Remember I had said before that I wanna stitch a scant off of the drawn line, simply because it's going to allow for my finished block, which is opened up to be a little bit bigger, and then I can trim it down. So I did that on what is my right side of the block over here the first time. Now with this overlapped piece, I'm doing it again on this, um, this bottom edge. The other thing that I want you to notice is the fact that I have an overlap happening right here. I'm gonna turn the block around to show you, hopefully you'll be able to see that in the back right here, the seams cross. That is super duper important, guys. You want that, that seam to cross, that intersection, to be a quarter of an inch from the bottom edge of your block, okay? So don't be worried about that. That's actually what you want. I'm gonna go ahead and continue on sewing, uh, chain sewing the remainder of these blocks. It's gonna go super duper fast, and then we'll trim, press, and then we're gonna measure. Sit tight. We're going to cut just below that stitching line right here. And remember the last time I told you, do one the correct way and just replicate the process. So I'm turning my geese to face me so that I can just trim off, because I'm right-handed, I can trim off the right-hand side. And I'm gonna do the same thing with all of them. I'm gonna hold them all the same way. That way I can make sure I don't make a mistake and cut the wrong thing going in the wrong direction. All of the seams that I cut are not exactly quarter of an inch, but that doesn't really matter because it's all gonna be tucked under. I'm gonna take it over to the iron now, set my seams, and then press again with the seam allowance underneath my background fabric. Now I wanted my finished block to measure six and a half inches across. 
by three and a half inches down. You can see that the bottom, the long edge of the goose sits on the three and a half inch line right there, which is absolutely wonderful. It leaves me with just a hair tr to trim off right here and just a bit to trim off right here at the point. In determining whether this block fits or not, I have it on the three and a half there. I could see already that I had just a smidge on either side to trim off. The other thing that you have to pay close attention to is where the two outside fabrics, background fabrics meet. And this one meets almost at that quarter inch dot on the three and a quarter inch line. So right here is where we're looking to have the point meet three and a half or three and a quarter inch line and a quarter inch in that's where your two diagonals will meet if you can get your flying geese to match up with those specifications then you are golden i'm going to measure the rest of them and make sure that they fit in and are correct all right so guys i went through and i trimmed up all of my um flying geese block now here's the thing there wasn't a whole lot for me to trim up in fact you can see this little pile of shreds right here. This is a sum total of all the trimming that I did for all 16 of my flying geese. There wasn't a whole lot there, but the important thing is, is that if my flying geese are a little bit off, there's a little extra fabric here or there. As I sew them together, that little uh, addition of fabric is going to kind of multiply and get bigger and bigger and the um, the size of the block is going to end up being a little bit weird and it's not going to match up exactly with the other pieces. Even though it's a small amount of trimming that needs to be done, the rest of your block is going to go together so much more easily if you actually do your trimming before you add them to the other blocks. Now the next step is going to be to put two flying geese blocks together and I'm going to chain sew those. I'm going to fold it together like this and sew along the edge where my point comes together. So I'm going to sew this way, do that every single time. Why do we do this? Because you have control over what happens with these seams as you are sewing and you're able to see that you're going to hit right on that point. You don't want to, to sew to the inside of the point and you'd rather not sew to the outside of the point so you can see exactly where you're going to sew. I'm going to chain sew two at a time all the way through and I'm also going to chain sew these, the brown and the background fabric together um, because they go together the same exact way. So I'm gonna get a lot of chain sewing done now and then I'm gonna show you how to press and you'll see how everything is supposed to lay out and go together. So I have all of my two color strips, the brown and the white, sewn together. One, two, three, four, there should be eight of them if I was actually going to do two blocks together. I'm just doing one. So I have four of them rather, and four pair of flying geese. So what I need to do now is press my seams of my flying geese. This is what they look like. I am going to press these seams so that they're going down toward the triangle. Okay, so they're going in the same direction as the geese are flying. The way I'll do this is I'll have my geese facing to my right, press my seam, and flip it open this way. All right, so I'm gonna press, like I said, I want my, if I can get my fingers to work, I want my geese to be facing to my right, yeah? So I'll close them up, seam is on the right i'll set my seam one two three gently open and then just use the weight of the iron to gently push the seam over toward the direction of the geese there we go and you can see that oh so lovely my point hits right on the seam that's what you're looking for so i'm just going to do this for the rest of them set the seam and gently push open now the other piece that I'm gonna press really quickly is the two three and a half by six and a half inch strips, these. And I'm gonna have the brown fabric on top and I'm gonna press so the seam allowance is behind the brown fabric. Okay, so I have my four two color strip sets 
and then my four flying geese pairs and I'm going to put them together with my center block which is this lovely teal with flowers on them. Okay so laying out all of the elements that we've created today we have the four flying geese pairs we have the four strip sets and then the center light blue um, square with the little granny flowers on them so so cute I think I like the way that this block the colors of this block have come out now to assemble it it's just gonna be just like a regular nine patch block I want to sew this row together the middle row together and then the bottom row together once I have that done then I'm going to press my seams in out in and then I'm going to join this row to this row to this row and press the seams open. It's a simple, simple process that I don't really think I need to walk you through because you already know how to do that, I'm sure. So let me start with my chain sewing. I'm going to do one, two, get these two together, these two together, these two together. Again, I want, when I'm working with my flying geese, I want that point to be on the edge that I'm going to be sewing on top. And you're watching me uh, do some of the sewing without pinning. Guys, for a, a distance of six and a half inches, it is not really necessary to do the pinning. If you're comfortable and are able to keep control of your fabric. Now, pinning is um, very, very important because it helps us to keep a, a consistent seam allowance. It helps our fabric to stay in place and we definitely want that. But for a smaller distance of fabric like this, it's not always necessary, but please, if you feel like you need that extra little support, by all means, put the pins in. The way I would suggest doing it is to place pins here and here to hold down the seam allowances that you're going to be sewing across, okay? So I put a pin here and here, and then I might even put a pin at the beginning and at the end. It's up to you though. Okay, so let me go ahead and sew. Because I'm not pinning, I just take a couple of steps, a couple of stitches, adjust my fabric to the way that I want it to be, and then continue on. Notice I slow down when I need to. When I'm chain sewing the strip set to the center square, it is not necessary to pin. Everything is the same size. In a case like this now, I have this center seam joining my two flying geese. The center seam is pushed in this direction and the bottom fabric, the strip set, that seam is also pushed in that same direction. So you know what I'm gonna do? There are a couple of things that I could do here. I could switch the direction of this seam allowance on the strip set, which I think I'm gonna do, or I could leave them going in the same direction and just make sure I pin very, very well. Pinning is still a very good idea, even if your seam allowances are going in opposite directions, which is what I'm gonna make it do. The reason I am gonna make them go in opposite directions is so that this seam, when it's all said and done, will lay flat. With both seam allowances facing in the same direction, I have less fabric over here and a whole bunch of fabric right here. It creates a bump in my quilt. And so I wanna get rid of that. So I'm going to push that bottom seam allowance in the opposite direction so that when I sew, I have a little bit of the fabric here and a little bit of the fabric there. It just kind of disperses all of that bump, okay? That's just one of those things that you think about as you are putting your blocks together. Another tool for your toolbox. So let me go ahead and press that real quick. So that means that my seam allowance is now going to be underneath my white fabric. You always hear quilters talk about pressing to the dark side. That's not always the case. That's not always the best plan. So now my seam allowance is facing the white fabric. When I put the two blocks together, they are now going in opposite directions. It disperses that, that bulk and it makes my finished quilt block lay a lot more flat and smooth. Again, I'm not gonna pin because it's not that far of a distance to sew. But please, by all means, if it makes you feel better, pin. So I have one, two, three. Now I'm going to add this here, this here, and that there. Okay, 
So we have our three rows together. Now it's important to know which way to press. Pressing is super duper important because like I was saying before, it helps to get those, uh, those seams going in opposite directions so that you can disperse all that bulk that's created by all those extraneous seams that are coming together. So the way we're gonna do this one is we're gonna press these two seams where the geese are toward your two-piece strip set. This one, you're gonna press out toward the two-piece strip set. And then the bottom one with the geese toward the strip set. So it's gonna look like this. Set my seam and I'm gonna push it toward the strip set so that my seam allowance ends up behind that brown fabric and not behind the flying geese. And the reason being that the flying geese have so much going on already, we don't wanna complicate and make things bulkier if we can avoid it. Set the seam and push out toward the brown fabric. There we go. So the seams are pointed toward the brown fabric. This one I'm gonna to point toward the brown fabric also. And here we go. Now notice guys, every time that I'm finished pressing, I lay my fabric back out in the order of the way I want my block to look. This is going to minimize the amount of mistakes that end up happening as you put your block together. I see a lot of people posting online their pictures of their quilts as they're making it, and invariably they talk about having some kind of a mistake where maybe the geese are facing in the wrong direction, or maybe even the strip set is flipped the wrong way. Just because they weren't laying it out and looking at it making sure everything is organized the way it needs to be before they start sewing it together every step of sewing needs to have another look at how things are organized so that you don't get mixed up because it's really easy with all these little pieces so now I'm going to put these two together and then these two together this time I am going to pin because I have a longer distance that I need to sew and I have a lot more places where my seams are gonna match up so here I am, I'm going to pin and then sew. There is no chain sewing in this section. As I put them together, I'm going to look at these, these middle seams first and they are going in opposite directions. The bottom one is facing in and the top one is facing out. So those are going in opposite directions. I'm going to pin on either side. I feel to make sure that my seams match up and I'm gonna pin on either side of the seam allowance to make sure that my, my seam allowance stays in place. Super important. So you can see that I've pinned on both sides of my seam. One pin on either side of my seam. I have this seam allowance pinned down on the front and if I flip it over to the back, you can see that the seam allowance on this side is also pinned down. That's why I put two in. My next one is going to be the flying geese on this two piece strip set. Make sure that those match up and are going in opposite directions. Pin on either side. Now, as I'm going through the making of these blocks, I'm actually following the instructions that the pattern comes with. The pattern instructed for us to press the strip set, the two-piece strip set, that would be the brown and the white, press the seam allowance toward the brown. But in putting it together, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And so I have to switch my, my seam allowance on that strip set so that my seam allowance is now being pressed to the white, not to the brown. I suggest with this block to make sure that when you make, when you sew that two-piece strip set together, the brown strip set, Rather than pressing your seam allowance toward the brown, press it all, all of them, toward the white. It's gonna make life a lot easier. Okay, so I have this seam sewn. You can see right here how my, I just flipped the seam allowance. I didn't press it yet, but I just flipped the seam allowance so that the, it's no longer pointing toward the brown as it naturally wants to, because that's how I pressed it in the first place. But I switched it and pinned it so that it's facing the white. I did it on this one as well. It's no longer pointing to, wanting to point toward the brown. I stitched it so that it's now pointing toward the white. Very important as you're putting your block together. So I'm going to take my pins out and I'm going to do this process one more time with the last row and then I'll show you how I want those, or how they should be, pressed together. Look at that. Oh, that's just so 
All right guys, so I have everything set up. I have it all sewn together. Isn't that lovely? And it's so much fun to look at because if you compare it to the one that I have on the wall, it's the same block. Um, that one has the brown geese here and where I have brown on this one, it's green and then the pink in the middle. It's a totally different look, a totally different feel. Um, but it's fun to see how your fabric choices will just change the whole thing. Now, before I can call myself done with this block, I need to press my seams. These two long seams, I'm gonna press them open. The reason I wanna press them open is again so i can disperse all of that fabric that bulk that's in the seams so that it's not all on one side or the other it'll help my my block to lay a lot more flat when you're pressing your seams open it might help you to just use your index finger just follow along ahead of your iron and do a quick finger press if those uh if those seams don't want to open as quickly as you would probably like them to open just finger press it to make it open up. Also important to make sure that you are not undoing any of the good pressing that you did before. So you might ask, as I'm going through, what am I doing about those seams for the two-piece strip set that were pressed in the wrong direction? I'm going ahead and pressing them in the correct direction so that they're now facing the white fabric rather than the brown fabric. But you might ask, okay, well, what happens if I can't get my fabric to lay flat? Just spritz it with a little bit of water, not a whole lot, just a slight spritz on that seam and press it in the right direction. The steam from the water is going to help to make sure that you are now laying flat and in the correct direction. Oh my goodness, I think I like it. The fabulous block, um, softer colors than the first one, but it went together really quickly, same way as the other. Make sure you pay really close attention to the way that you press your, your blocks. Your um, two-piece strip sets need to actually be pressed toward the white, the background fabric, whatever that background fabric is that you choose. Press it toward your background fabric. Make sure that on your rows, when you get your rows together, you press your secondary seams opposite to each other. And then when you put those three together to make the block, press these long seams, those final seams, open. It's all going to give you a nice, flat, smooth block that you'll be able to enjoy in your quilt. It's gonna make it easier for you to quilt or your long armor to quilt, whoever you choose to give it to. I hope that this process helps you in not just making your two-piece uh, strip sets, but also with your uh, flying geese block. In subsequent videos, we are going to end up making flying geese again, working with the same process. So you're going to get more and more practice as we go along. But remember, this is a skill builder quilt. And so that's the whole point. Do it over and over again until you get really, really comfortable with it. Also remember, this is only one way of making some of these blocks. As you um, continue on your quilting journey, you're going to find lots of different ways to do these blocks. There are different rulers that you can use, different techniques techniques that are out there. This is just one of the ways I'm trying to help you build up that toolbox of, of tips and tricks so that you too will be able to make really beautiful blocks um, and read any pattern. I hope this helped. I hope you've subscribed. When you subscribe, you'll be able to be notified of any new videos that I come out. Drop me a comment below to let me know what you think about this block. Do you like this colorway or do you prefer the one that's on the wall? Let me know which one suits you best. You can find the kit um, and the pattern to this quilt on my website a needle the letter n thread.com and you can also check us out on instagram and on facebook reach out let us know what you're thinking about don't forget the link to everything is down below let me know if you have any questions about this i'd be glad to help i'll see you on the next video bye